Zelensky recently had a speech where he was talking about a whole bunch of things. And one of the things he published during this speech was very interesting to me because it was the first time Zelensky ever publicly acknowledged Ukrainian death data for soldiers out in the field. The Ukrainians have not published any data on the amount of soldiers that have died fighting. They haven't done it for the entirety of the war. The Russians have, not that the numbers have been particularly believable, uh, but the Ukrainians have refused to for what they have said were security purposes. And for the first time, Zelensky came forward and he said that Ukraine has lost 31,000 soldiers killed. And he said the injured he would not provide. So that means he's only including, this isn't total casualties. These are soldiers killed. So 31,000 dead isn't, these are all the soldiers taken off the field. These are the ones that have died. This doesn't include people who have lost legs, lost arms, uh, you know, might have like PTSD to such a point where they can't serve. In different injuries that would put take somebody off the field. This only includes the death number. Now, do I believe it? Well, I think the number I would I would probably most want to compare it to or would be the Jack Textera leaks because that's American intelligence and that analyzing Ukrainian losses. And if I remember correctly, the amount of casualties that they were reporting then were around like 130,000 to 150,000, something in that range. And that was months, 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 months ago. But that's total casualty numbers. So that includes the injured, which Zelensky didn't want to provide because he said, if I say how many are injured, then that will tell the Russians how many people we've taken off the field, which we do not want to do. Definitely as they're dealing with a manpower problem right now. So do I believe that number? Um, honestly, I don't know. Uh, this is the first time they've come forward, so I would say that, you know, there, I have to believe that there was some reason to come forward. So whether it was just to, like, rally morale with the fake number or be like, okay, we've kept this in private for security reasons, but now we're willing to put it forward for, you know, morale reasons to give you an idea of how many people we've lost in comparison. I would probably suggest that we do not take the Ukrainian number at face value. Uh, it, I don't think it's a smart idea. Even if you trust the Ukrainian government, at the end of the day, if you just accept the government's uh, statistics at face value, at a certain point, you're just a stenographer for the Ukrainian government. That's not to say that they couldn't ever publish data or ever publish anything that isn't true, but the Ukrainian government's goal at the end of the day is to survive. The goal of every state is to survive. And so if there was a situation where publishing fake data could help them survive, well, I'm not saying I'm all I'm going to say is I don't think it'd be impossible that they would publish fake data. Now, I'm not saying that's what they did here. There is a certain credibility that comes with telling the truths. And if journalists can connect what they believe from offset intelligence and from leaks, what the casualty numbers actually are, if it looks similar to that, then the government gets more credibility in its statements. It words means more because when I see numbers like this and this is from Kim.com, who's blocked me because I'm so so mean he wrote Zelensky lied to his people about the casualty numbers of the Ukrainian troops Russian defense minister Shoigu disclosed today that Ukraine has lost 444,000 soldiers currently 800 Ukrainian soldiers die every day obituated obituary data from Ukraine confirms this now let me just be clear there is no obituary data saying that 444,000 soldiers have been killed. There isn't. If there was, it'd be very noticeable. It'd be very clear. Now, tracking obituary data is one way you can try to figure out casualties. In fact, people have been tracking Russian obituary data to try to figure out uh, how many Russians have died in service, not only obituary data, but also missing person data. There's a lot of people who went missing around Avdivka and their family members haven't been told the fates of their brothers, their sons, and their fathers. And so they're just missing and they can at times go missing for months. And so what a lot of people will do is they'll look at the obituary data and look at the missing data and they'll try to estimate how many people were lost in certain battles and they'll uh, sometimes people even like look for keywords like oh how many people are missing around of deepka how many people are missing around robotne how many people are missing around these areas but there is no obituary data and he he just says this he doesn't provide it if it was true that obituary data confirmed this, then he could always show that the obituary data confirmed this. There is no obituary data saying 444,000 soldiers. If there was, 
obituary data saying that that 31,000 number from Zelensky would get taken over the knee of any respectable journalist that had gone through the obituary data and cracked it in half, saying this is not physically possible, this is not possible in any way, it is impossible. But I have not seen this. And I'm not saying that Zelensky's numbers are 100% correct, but I am saying, or, or, or even that Zelensky's number could not be an undercount, or whatever. What I am saying is that if Kim.com's problem is people taking Zelensky's numbers at face value, these numbers are just unbelievable. And they're just, you're taking it face value from Sergei Shoigu, the Russian defense minister. It's ridiculous. For me, a lot of the pro-Russia supporting the invasion or, or simping for the Russians, it comes off to me like this. I'm cool, I'm hip, I'm chic, and Kim.com is 100, 100%. A oldie, uh, a man, getting older and older who wants to be hip who wants to be cool if you look at uh can we look at kim.com's campaign stuff from when he was trying to run for office off of his like hacker gimmick what the heck is this this is not his hacker song at all what, what are all these songs these are all new have i missed all this What is these? Oh, here's the one I remember. This is my favorite. This is my favorite one. Okay, here it is. Here it is. The war for the internet has begun. Hollywood is in control of politics. The government is killing innovation. Don't let them get away with this. Don't. I have a dream. <laughs> okay but very much like hey look at me i'm so cool i'm so hip i'm the hero i'm the dope but he's he's not all of his like oh i'm gonna release his great big hack in new zealand politics all of that shit fell through uh but he can be the hip contrarian against the government he can be the hip guy going against the mainstream narrative by accepting whatever is the opposite of the mainstream narrative. But in my opinion, if you're trying to be like, you know, a rebel and you're trying to be, you know, against the grain, against the establishment, if what you do is just pick the exact opposite of the establishment position, then you're letting the establishment choose your position anyway. But putting that aside, he, he has abandoned the American establishment position to run over to just grab the Russian establishment position, literally acting as a stenographer for Russian government statistics and then pretending that obituary data from Ukraine confirms this. This guy has taken footage from Sivdiv's channel, the Ukrainian volunteer, the foreign fighter who goes to different war zones and fights for causes he believes in, and posted it pretending that these were NATO soldiers. And guess what? It wasn't just him that did it. It was the Russian government that did it too. The Russian government pushed that propaganda too. They were like, hey, look at this black guy fighting for Ukraine, must be NATO. Russian state TV is very brilliant in its argumentation. But this guy, Kim.com, he is a liar. He pushes propaganda. His lies are stupid. And anytime he gets called out on a lie, or some, even if people do in the most polite way possible, he blocks, 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 blocks. Dude has the thinnest skin you could imagine, even if, you know, he's not particularly thin. Point is, Kim.com, not a reliable source. What the fuck is this, dude? How bad has it gotten? How bad? Where is Elon figuring out these guys are his reliable sources of information that he wants to boost to the millions and millions and millions of people who support him or follow him or use his platform. This guy regularly just pushes Russian government propaganda. This right here is Russian government propaganda. And Elon Musk grabs it, holds it up and pushes it. This is on top of the fact that a few weeks ago, Elon Musk was telling people to call their congressman to stop aid to Ukraine. Why is it every cause Elon Musk gets involved in, he ends up backstabbing the people in that cause? Remember the Malaysian cave children? Those children that got caught, and I think it was a Malaysian or Thai or a cave in Thailand. I think it was Thailand. 
they were they were trapped in the cave and elon with these kids trapped in this underwater cave said oh i'm gonna do a submarine i want to do a submarine to save these kids in thailand and then one of the rescue divers that ended up helping save the kids said that it was impractical so elon responded you're a pedophile and, it, and i mean looking at that from my perspective it looks like elon wants to get in involved in help he flies over there starts shaking everyone's hand immediately once people don't appreciate his recommendations he lashes out like a child he gets involved in ukraine at the start of the war after the digital minister fedorov asked elon to help he sends over starlink and so the ukrainians seeing the usefulness of having dishes that could point at the sky and immediately get a connection as the Russians do massive cyber attacks across the whole country, they take it. The military obviously seeing the usefulness for communication, they take it. Hell, I i mean, I have helped ship around Starlink on a few occasions, putting my money out there to try to help. I know a lot of people have tried to help it. Starlink was being used all across the front line. But then what happened as after the country became reliant on Starlink as a system, and heavily using it, and not saying that it's impossible for them to ship off of it, but it would be a fucking hassle. Then they started to see outages. Outages on the front during offensive operations. Outages that were really hurting communications during battles where people died. And then when there were operations to try to attack Russian ships in Crimea, Elon shuts off Starlink services because he doesn't want his weapons that he sent to a country at war to be used at war he was afraid that a strike on crimea would provoke an expansion would provoke world war three then the ukrainians did it anyway again and again and again and again and again and again blowing up submarines blowing up the flagship of the black sea fleet destroying over 20 to 30 percent of the black sea fleet striking ports striking radar systems striking air defense striking command posts all across crimea and the russians don't do shit besides what they were already doing before so he was wrong but he keeps doubling down he doesn't want it to be used for war. He doesn't want it to be used for war. And so there's outages here, there's outages there, and the outages only stopped, and there's still problems reported every once in a while, after the Department of Defense made him sign a contract. But even after that, he was still throwing up crazy shit, like, oh, Eastern Ukraine wants to be part of Russia, because they voted in 20, what was it, 2012, for a party that didn't like Zelensky, or didn't, no, not didn't like Zelensky, but is considered more pro-Russian. That's not, that doesn't mean they want to be part of Russia just because they voted for the Party of Regions. They could just mean that they, you know, they were given a favor by one of the Party of Regions people. It could mean they agreed with some of their policies, maybe more, some of their more conservative policies. It could mean any, any number of things besides, I want to be Russian. But he just took it at face value, despite polling data of the contrary, despite the vote the Ukrainians had in the 90s. He said a bunch of things that were completely ridiculous and completely, uh, to be honest, just uneducated. But he kept doubling down and tripling down and quadrupling down. And it got worse and worse and worse. And now we're seeing tons of footage coming out of Russians using Starlink near the front. One second. Let's see if I can pull this up. I think I have some here. I don't like using J of Kiev as a source, but this is just the one I had most immediately. But there's tons of resources on this. The Russian soldiers, proud of their Starlink. And this is just one video. I've seen Starlinks getting blown up by Ukrainian FPV drones. I've seen Starlinks in service by many different Russian units now. It's expanding their use of Starlink. And what does Elon Musk and Starlink say in response? Oh, we're not giving it directly to them. Oh, well, you know, at the end of the day, we, we have to provide service to all the areas on the front line, Why, uh, near the front line, if we're gonna provide service to any of the areas near the front line. They very much could put more barriers between the Russians and using Starlink. They could make it so, hey, you have to use like, passport information in order to open up the Starlink account if you're using Starlink in Ukraine. You could make it if your problem was, well, I don't like people having to enter their passport. Okay, make it just Ukraine specific. You can find ways, maybe not to stop every single use of Starlink, but to make it more difficult. But is is that what Starlink is doing? Is that what Starlink is pursuing? Not that I'm aware. 
Elon Musk at the start of this war had posters of himself up with other heroes from the West that had helped to support Ukraine. And a few months in, the poster was being torn down by city officials and the places that it was put up in because of his comments he made about the war and the nonsense he was saying. And at this point, he is, by just blasting stuff like this, completely unconfirmed information, completely unconfirmed casualty data, from a huckster to millions and millions of people on Twitter. This is just acting as a stenographer for the Russian government, just pushing Russian government propaganda while trying to act like I am anti-establishment. Well, I mean, maybe you're against the American establishment. Congratulations, you're very counterculture. You're very cool, Mr. Musk. But now you've just accepted the Russian establishment and its place. If this is the type of nonsense you're gonna be pushing on the timeline.